According to the latest reports from the USGS, groundwater in at least 10 American states is becoming increasingly toxic. In some private wells contamination levels are dozens of times higher than the federal safety limit. This growing problem is quietly growing beneath the surface, spreading across states across the United States. Less than 20 miles from Milwaukee sits a peaceful suburb where residents once believed they drank the purest water in America. Groundwater pumped from ancient rock layers hundreds of meters underground. Crystal clear, odorless, tasteless. Then in 2016 everything changed. An Environmental Protection Agency report revealed that Waukesha's pristine water was laced with radium, a radioactive element known to cause bone cancer and blood disorders. The discovery shocked everyone. Turns out radium forms naturally as uranium, and thorium slowly decay inside the dolomite rock that makes up the region's aquifer. The deeper the city drilled for water, the more radium it pulled up. Scientists from the Wisconsin Geological and Natural History Survey warned that local aquifers are full of these minerals, and the more water you pump, the higher the concentration gets. Some wells in Waukesha even showed more than twice the federal safety limit. Here's the thing. The problem wasn't new. Reports of elevated radium levels had been around since the years 1970, but fixing it was expensive, so the city diluted the water instead of finding a new source. As the population grew, pumping increased, pulling up even more radioactive water. Radium doesn't strike fast, it builds up in bones, slowly replacing calcium. Over time it weakens the immune system and damages bone marrow. Between 2010 and 2020, Doctors saw higher rates of blood-related illnesses in neighborhoods using deep wells. After years of public debate, Waukesha finally won approval in 2016 to draw clean water from Lake Michigan. The massive Great Water Alliance project completed in 2023 cost nearly $300 million and stretched over 30 kilometers of new pipelines. But clean water came with a haunting reminder. Shutting off the wells didn't erase the radium. It lingers in the rock for decades. Today, sealed wells and radiation warning signs stand quietly among homes, a grim monument to a costly lesson. If natural radiation can poison a city, what happens when the contamination comes from chemicals designed by humans? If Wisconsin's danger came from natural radiation, Arizona's threat carries the scent of man-made chemicals. Substances once celebrated as symbols of progress then buried and forgotten. Between Scottsdale and Tempe lies one of America's earliest environmental disasters, the Indian Bendwash Superfund site, listed by the EPA back in 1983. In the years 1950, Tempe was booming. Big names like Motorola, General Electric and Boeing were building parts for the Cold War. They used industrial solvents like TCE and PCE to clean metal, and electronic components then dumped the waste straight into the ground or nearby drains. Some of it evaporated in the desert heat, but much of it sank deep into the aquifer. By 1979 engineers drilling new wells found TCE levels nearly 10 times the federal limit. At first they thought it was a mistake, until more tests confirmed the truth. The groundwater beneath Phoenix's suburbs was contaminated by a 13-kilometer chemical plume slowly drifting underground. TCE and PCE are no joke. They damage the liver and nervous system and are linked to liver and kidney cancer. Health agencies have long warned that even low long-term exposure can harm children and pregnant women. The sad part? Scientists had been warning about TCE since the years 1970. But cleanup was expensive, and many companies closed or sold their land before the EPA could hold anyone accountable. Cleanup projects began late and cost tens of millions of dollars. Activated carbon filtration systems helped reduce chemical concentrations, but according to EPA's 2019 five-year report, some wells still exceeded safety standards by 5 to 9 micrograms per liter. And while Arizona battles ghosts of Cold War industry, another state faces a toxin that comes not from factories but from the earth itself. But before we move on to that state, please give me 10 seconds of your time. If you find my content useful and interesting, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos and each subscription from you is the biggest motivation for me to continue creating better content. Head a little north where the desert turns into high plateau, and you'll find a different kind of threat, not from factories but from the earth itself, arsenic. In the heart of New Mexico sits Albuquerque, once called the Oasis of the West. Its groundwater was treasured, the lifeline of desert living, pumped from deep beneath the Rio Grande Basin to supply over half a million people, but that liquid gold had a hidden poison. 
The U.S. Geological Survey found that the volcanic rocks around Albuquerque naturally release arsenic into groundwater. Normally it stays locked away underground, but when humans drill deeper and pump harder, the falling water table lets oxygen reach those rocks, freeing the arsenic trapped for thousands of years. In 2001 the EPA tightened the drinking water standard from 50 to 10 parts per billion, and overnight Albuquerque found itself on the list of cities with unsafe levels. Many wells showed between 12 and 18 parts per billion, not high enough to shut down, but high enough to worry. Experts had warned about this since the years 1990, yet cleanup was costly and delayed. The city chose to monitor instead of act. Only in 2006 did the San Juan Chama project begin bringing surface water from the Colorado River, but that fix covered just the central area. In South Valley, a mostly Hispanic low-income community many families still rely on private wells, some with arsenic levels twice the legal limit. A 2019 state survey found that nearly 30 of local wells exceeded safety standards. The cruel truth? Arsenic may be natural, but the crisis is man-made, from overpumping urban sprawl and neglect. Even today some families boil their water, not realizing arsenic doesn't vanish. And while New Mexico struggles with nature's poison, the next state reveals what happens when agriculture itself becomes the contamination source. In the middle of California lies the Central Valley, the nation's food basket, where endless fields feed millions. But just beneath that fertile soil, something unseen is spreading. Nitrates from fertilizer, manure, and industrial waste are slowly seeping into the groundwater. You can't smell them, you can't taste them. But once inside the body, they block oxygen in the blood, especially dangerous for babies, causing what doctors call blue baby syndrome. In small towns like Tulare and Kettleman City, people started noticing their water tasted off, faintly chemical, like fertilizer. Some newborns were weaker than before, but families kept drinking it. What choice did they have? After World War II, industrial farming transformed the Central Valley. Fields of corn, almonds, and citrus flourished, fed by millions of tons of nitrogen fertilizer and dairy waste. Above ground the valley looked like prosperity. Underground the aquifer was quietly changing minus poisoned drop by drop. Warnings about nitrate contamination go back to the years 1970, but agriculture drives California's economy, so every attempt to regulate it hit a wall. Big farms fought new rules, officials hesitated, and the people depending on their wells were left out of the conversation. Decades later, the problem hasn't gone away. Even with new filters and well replacements nitrates stay in the soil, washing back underground every rainy season, a toxic loop that never ends. Today over a million Californians rely on wells with unsafe nitrate levels. Community systems can't afford full treatment, and bottled water deliveries have become normal life. The bitter truth? The people who feed America can't safely drink their own water. And if farming can poison an aquifer, what happens when the pollution comes from the energy industry? If California's farms are poisoning their own water then Texas faces a different kind of danger, one born from oil. Midland in the heart of the Permian Basin was once the symbol of America's oil boom. Since the years 1920, thousands of wells have made it one of the most productive energy regions in the world. But beneath those oil-rich rocks lies the Ogallala Aquifer, a massive underground reservoir that supplies water to eight Great Plains states. And as aging wells corrode and cracks form in old cement casings, something troubling is happening. Oil and water are starting to mix. Drilling waste and fracking fluids filled with arsenic, salts and hundreds of industrial chemicals have been detected in some wells near Midland. Locals say their tap water smells metallic, sometimes even has a yellowish tint. Officials blame natural minerals, but residents point to what they see every day. Endless chemical trucks, fracking pits bubbling after rain, and small tremors shaking their homes. Each new oil well uses millions of gallons of water to fracture rock. That process not only pollutes groundwater but also triggers small earthquakes. Texas promised to plug all orphaned wells by 2030, yet tens of thousands remain. Oil keeps flowing, while water grows scarcer and more toxic. The Ogallala Aquifer is already shrinking from decades of agricultural pumping. Now contamination adds another layer of crisis. Once those chemicals seep in they can travel for miles underground, almost impossible to remove. In West Texas towns many families no longer trust their tap water. They buy bottled water or install costly filters. Kids grow up knowing, don't drink from the faucet. And while Texas grapples with its oil legacy, another state is facing another industrial toxin that's just as dangerous. 
Beneath Florida's green lawns and sparkling springs lies a hidden world, a maze of limestone caverns that hold the state's drinking water. These porous rocks make Florida famous for its crystal clear springs, but they also make it dangerously vulnerable. For decades, fertilizer runoff, leaking septic tanks, and industrial waste have been seeping straight into the Floridan aquifer, the source of water for nearly 90% of residents. In central Florida, especially around Polk and Hillsborough counties, phosphate mining has torn deep scars into the land, exposing groundwater to phosphogypsum, a radioactive byproduct of fertilizer production. In 2016, a massive sinkhole opened beneath a waste stack near Mulberry, sending over 200 million gallons of radioactive wastewater into the aquifer. Officials insisted it would dilute naturally, but soon, nearby wells tested positive for uranium and radium, and residents began reporting skin rashes and stomach issues. Phosphate mining has powered Florida's economy since the early 1900, but it leaves behind billions of gallons of toxic waste. Huge phosphogypsum stacks, some over 200 feet tall now loom across the landscape, each one holding acidic water mixed with radium that stays radioactive for more than 1600 years. Sinkholes are nothing new here, Florida's limestone ground collapses easily, and when that happens beneath these waste piles, contamination spreads fast, faster than cleanup crews can respond. State agencies track radiation, but enforcement is weak. Companies insist levels are safe, though those standards were written decades ago. And for families living near the mines, trust is thin, because every new sinkhole is a reminder that the ground beneath them is literally falling away. If you're still watching this video and found this information helpful, please comment number 2 below to let me know you're here. And get ready, because next up is a state that's struggling with chemicals that never break down. Up north Michigan's Great Lakes shine like glass, but the real danger runs underground. Across the state, thousands of wells are contaminated with PFAS, the so-called forever chemicals. They were used in firefighting foam, waterproof coatings and non-stick pans, and they never break down. Over time they've been linked to thyroid disease, liver damage and cancer. In parchment near Kalamazoo, people once bragged about their pure groundwater, they even bottled it for sale. But in 2018 testing showed PFAS levels over 20 times the federal health limit. Overnight the entire town's water was declared unsafe. Residents were told not to drink, cook with or even bathe in it. In Oscoda, near the former Wurtsmith Air Force Base, entire neighborhoods rely on bottled water after decades of firefighting foam seeped into the aquifer. Military bases across America used PFAS-laden foam for training exercises, spraying it directly onto runways and training grounds. The chemicals soaked into soil and traveled downward into groundwater, by the time anyone realized the danger, contamination had spread for miles. Today Michigan has over 11,000 suspected PFAS sites, making it one of the most polluted groundwater states in the country. Cleanup is painfully slow, and these invisible molecules keep drifting unfiltered, unbreakable and everywhere. PFAS builds up in human tissue bit by bit, with every glass of water. The state has identified contamination at airports, bases, factories and landfills, but testing every private well would cost billions, and most homeowners have no idea if their water is safe, so they drink and cook, hoping they're not among the unlucky ones. In Pennsylvania's rolling hills, where clear streams cut through green forests, another kind of disaster is rising, not from floods or storms, but from deep underground. Methane, the main ingredient in natural gas, is leaking into rural groundwater. The culprit? Fracking drilling deep into shale to release gas trapped for millions of years. When wells aren't sealed properly, methane, arsenic, and even radium can slip into aquifers. In Demok, families once turned on their faucets and watched their tap water catch fire. Literally, videos of flaming sinks went viral. Tests confirmed high levels of methane and toxic metals. People suffered from headaches, nausea, and skin rashes. Some fled their homes. Others stayed too broke to leave. Living in fear each time they turned on the tap, the Marcellus Shale Formation beneath Pennsylvania holds one of the largest natural gas reserves in the world. Since the 2000s, fracking has turned Pennsylvania into an energy giant. Thousands of wells, millions of gallons of water, chemicals and sand blasted underground. Jobs came and so did money, but the environmental cost was buried, until it started bubbling back up through people's wells. Regulators have logged over 3,000 water complaints linked to oil and gas drilling, Proving responsibility is tricky, and cleanup often never comes. 
For many families, bottled water deliveries are now permanent. The irony is hard to ignore. Pennsylvania powers much of the Northeast with its natural gas, yet its own residents can't safely drink their water. Farmers worry about their livestock. Parents worry about their kids. A generation here is growing up in homes where lighting the tap water on fire isn't a trick, it's a warning. Between Baton Rouge and New Orleans runs an 85-mile stretch known as Cancer Alley, a place where more than 150 petrochemical plants line the Mississippi River. Beneath them lies one of the most polluted groundwater systems in America. In St. John the Baptist Parish, tests have found chloroprene, benzene and vinyl chloride, all known carcinogens, seeping through shallow aquifers that once provided drinking water. Many local wells are now sealed or abandoned, replaced by bottled water and long municipal lines. Cancer Alley got its name for a reason. Cancer rates here are far higher than the national average. The air carries a sweet chemical smell that sticks to clothes and lingers in homes. But the danger isn't just in the air, it's in the soil and the groundwater beneath every yard. A 2022 report found that Louisiana's industrial corridor releases more toxic chemicals per square mile than anywhere else in the U.S. What was once farmland and sugarcane country is now a chemical landscape where locals describe their tap water as sweet, with something bitter behind it. Few dare to drink it. This story began after World War II, when factories built along the river used its water to cool machinery, and as an easy dumping ground, waste went into unlined pits or straight into the river. By the time environmental laws arrived the contamination was already deep underground. Today the plants still run providing jobs in towns that desperately need them. But people here live with an impossible choice. Leave their homes or stay and risk their health. Generations who once worked the fields now live in the shadow of smokestacks. Regulations exist but cleanup is slow and underfunded. Companies settle lawsuits quietly while toxins keep spreading underground, mile by mile. Cancer Alley is America's warning, proof that progress built on pollution always comes with a price. In the Appalachian Highlands, the shadow of coal still lingers in the water. For generations, coal fueled West Virginia's economy. It also fractured the ground beneath. Acid mine drainage, heavy metals, and coal ash now taint wells and streams across dozens of counties. In some towns, iron and manganese levels are so high the tap water runs orange. The 2014 Elk River chemical spill only deepened the mistrust. When 10,000 gallons of a coal-washing chemical called MCHM leaked into the water supply, 300,000 people lost safe drinking water overnight. The water smelled like liquor. People got rashes, and breathing Businesses closed. Schools shut down. Charleston, the state capital, ran dry for weeks. The spill happened because aging tanks sat just upstream from a major intake point. When one burst, chemicals poured into the river and straight into the city's pipes, exposing just how fragile the state's water systems really are. But that disaster was just one chapter. Across coal country, abandoned mines fill with toxic water every spring. As tunnels collapse and aquifers shift, acid mine drainage spreads into new areas once thought safe. Thousands of old mines sealed long ago now leak sulfuric water laced with metals into rivers and wells. Then there's coal ash, the toxic residue from power plants, stored in vast ponds that leach arsenic, mercury and lead into the ground as liners fail. West Virginians live between two inheritances, one of rugged beauty and one of buried poison. The coal is gone but its pollution remains, seeping quietly through the earth, staining streams orange and reminding everyone of the true cost of America's power. And there you have it, a stark look at the hidden costs of our nation's progress. From radium in Wisconsin to PFAS in Michigan and the lingering poisons in Cancer Alley, the stories are unsettling. What are your thoughts on these revelations? Do you live in one of these states and have you experienced any issues with your water quality? Share your experiences and insights in the comments below. If this video opened your eyes, please give it a like and share it with friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you stay informed on critical issues like these. Your engagement helps us bring more vital stories to light.